In this video we're going to solve example 5.4. Example 5.4 says a 70 kilogram base jumper leaps from a cliff that is 5,000 meters above the ground below. Part way down he successfully deploys his parachute and just before touching the ground at the bottom his downward velocity is 5 meters per second. You're asked some questions about changes in energy. What is the change in the jumper's gravitational potential energy from the top to the bottom? B, what is the change in the jumper's kinetic energy from the top to the bottom? And finally, was the total energy, kinetic plus gravitational potential of the jumper, conserved during the jump? Let's start off by drawing a picture to illustrate what's happening in this problem. So here's my cliff, and up here at the top is where the jumper jumps off, and he starts off jumping with no initial velocity, so he just leaps and starts to fall from rest. And the height of the cliff is given as 5,000 meters. Down here at the bottom, uh, just before he lands, he is moving at slow speed because he has his parachute. And that slow speed is given as 5 meters per second. And the height, of course, right before he hits the ground is going to be zero. We're going to use this information about velocity and height to calculate gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy at both the bottom and the top. So up here at the top, we can calculate his gravitational potential energy. And that's going to be given by his mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the height. Those numbers are 70 kilograms, 9.81 meters per second squared, and the height above the ground is 5,000 meters. We can use the calculator to solve for this gravitational potential energy. And we get that it's about 3.5 million joules. So we'll write in the amount. three million four hundred thirty three thousand five hundred joules. Down at the bottom the gravitational potential energy is given by the same formula but the height is zero so the gravitational potential energy will just be zero. Up at the top we can go back and calculate the kinetic energy but up at the top the velocity is zero so the kinetic energy will be zero down here at the bottom we will calculate kinetic energy using one half mv squared in this case we're going to have one half times seventy times five squared and we can use the calculator again and we see that the kinetic energy at the bottom is 875 newtons. Now we can use this information to answer the questions that were asked. So in part A, what is the change in the gravitational potential energy from the top to the bottom? Well, gravitational potential energy decreased by about 3.5 million joules. So I'm going to give this a negative sign, and it's going to be negative 3,433,500 joules. In part B, what happens to the kinetic energy from the top to the bottom? Well, that increases, so I'm going to give it a positive sign positive 875 joules. And then you're asked this question, was energy conserved? So the question here is really, was the total energy constant? Total energy being constant, that would mean that energy was conserved. And we can see here that the answer is no. We can see that there was a huge change in gravitational potential energy that's not offset by a change in kinetic energy. What this means is that this was not a closed system. The jumper is not a closed system. There is work done on the jumper from the outside world. In this case, it's work that would be done by the drag forces from air resistance. In this problem, if we were to ignore forces from air resistance, then the parachute wouldn't have done the jumper very much good. And you can see that there's a big change in total energy. That means that energy was not conserved. And so that is how we're going to answer example 5.4.